Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for being here today. I'm here to talk about education in an evolving GIS landscape. Uh, my name is Britta Ricker, and I'll be presenting on behalf of the work of myself and Dr. Jim Thatcher. Um, we recently, we're actually just finishing teaching the first year of a new Master's in Geospatial Technology program at University of Washington, Tacoma. Um, additionally, we are acting as um, cyber GIS fellows, so we're fellows um, in the Center for Advanced Digital and Spatial Studies um, at the National Center for Supercomputer Applications, which is housed at the University of Illinois in um, um, Champaign. So um, there are 17 cyber GIS fellows right now um, dispersed across the United States. We're all teaching at the university level um, concepts around a GIS. Um, and it's been really a great opportunity to collaborate with others who are facing similar challenges. This has been my first year teaching um, at the university level, so it's been actually a really comforting experience to have this opportunity for reflection. Um, and all of these cyber GIS fellows were teaching in very different departments. Some are coming from a very computer science standpoint, others are urban planners, um, and other in straight geography programs. Some of the fellows are brand new like me, others are very experienced um, professors. So it's been really great to learn from each other, and I'm gonna share a little bit about um, what I've learned in the past year. Um, so first I'm gonna talk about the evolution of the technology and my way of thinking throughout the past year. I'm also gonna talk about um, actors within this digital mapping community, which we're all a part of. And then, based on these different actors, how can we tailor our pedagogical approaches to teaching these GIS concepts um, right now? And then I also want to talk about the goal of attracting more people to this dialogue that we have through mapping. But I want to do that without overwhelming these new people that we're trying to uh, bring to, to the mapping community. I'm really enthusiastic about uh, my discipline and my domain. So when people ask me what I do, I often say things like, we use lasers to point at the earth to measure how high mountains are. And, and we, we map where disease happens. And, and people are like, whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? So I have to calm down, break things down slowly, and go from there. Um, so first, let's talk a little bit about the evolution of uh, the technology. And um, I can't do that without talking about um, my, my personal journey and how I got here. So how many of you have known from a young age that you wanted to be a part of this mapping process? Okay. Okay, so there's quite a few of you, actually. Um, I didn't know that. I didn't even know it was an option to be a cartographer to be a GIS analyst. I didn't know what it was. I wish I would have had that expo exposure to OSM in high school like the presenter before us showed us. That was amazing. Um, but now I have this um, opportunity to teach others. So here's a picture of some of my students. And as I'm teaching them, I'm constantly reflecting back to when I was a student. What was I thinking? What was I like? Um, and when I was deciding what to do uh, when I grow up, I, I, when I was younger, I wanted to be my Aunt Martha. My Aunt Martha lives in Brooklyn, New York. She has an awesome job in Manhattan. She um, traveled the world. I was like, I want to be Aunt Martha. So when it was time to choose my career path, I asked Aunt Martha, well, how do I become you? And, <laughs> I, and I'm staying with Aunt Martha right now. And she said, was that like your moment in the, the graduate, you know, plastics? You need to do plastics. No, she told me, you need a skill. You need a skill. She didn't tell me what skill that was, um, but I needed a skill. And during that time, I was an undergrad, and my academic mentor at the time was a cartographer. Um, and he sat me down, and he said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to do international relations. I want to do international development. And he sat me down, and he told me how mapping can help me achieve the goals I had set out. How can ma uh, mapping help me find answers to problems? So um, after, uh, after my, G I ended up majoring in geography and GIS, and I um, worked for um, FEMA for a while, uh, mapping the evolving uh, floodplains and landscapes. Um, and GIS is such an exciting realm to be teaching in and to be um, doing because the landscape is constantly changing. Um, I was, I'm shocked that when I sometimes tell people that I make maps, have, anyone, have, have any of you gotten strange reactions to that? Like some people have asked me, well, hasn't the world been mapped? And it's like, well, yeah, but it, we're constantly reshaping it. We're constantly changing it. Um, and so we're constantly going to need more people to help us with this process of mapping. 
So not only is the landscape changing, but the technology is changing too. Um, does anyone remember Arc ArcView? <laughs> yeah, it looks a lot different now, doesn't it? These tools were not very accessible. You had to be a tr trained to use them. They were frustrating. Um, but luckily, these things are changing. And now more and more people are gaining access to the technology that was once only for um, the trained scientists. Now more and more people have access to this technology through um, the, the use of the internet and mobile phones that have GPS devices in them. We have the opportunity to volunteer geographic information and then consume them through location-based services. So these things are constantly changing. But one thing that remains constant is the goal of GIS. Um, the goal of GIS is to take this inventory of spatial information. Um, to, we are doing this to reveal unknowns or patterns in the world that may go unnoticed if we didn't document them and then an analyze them, all with the purpose of making informed decisions. So that, that has remained the same in terms of the point of geographic information systems and geographic information science. Another thing that's remained a constant, um, and Barbara pointed, pointed out to me, is this challenge of what do we teach in GIS? The, the technology has always been changing, but we've always had this challenge since the, uh, since the evolution of GIS. Well, what, what do we need to be teaching our students? And there is this body of knowledge, um, this established curriculum for GIS professionals. And this still, even though the technology is changing, this remains the same. The core. Um, the core body of knowledge that we need to teach our students is still relevant. Um, but with that, I think we need to take a minute to talk about the actors in this digital mapping process. Um, so the process with GIS and the phases of data flow, there are many different actors and we need to be aware of each other because we're passing data back and forth to each other. Um, so there are the field biologists, there are the city workers, there are all these people that are collecting the GIS data, they're, they're collecting the data, they're making data abstractions, and then they're entering it into um, an, a tablet computer or a desktop computer. Um, and then we're, the data is being stored and aggregated and analyzed, and then it's being disseminated in the form of a map. And you'll see the arrows point in both directions because what, what we use, what the map, also informs decision making that is then implemented in the world. And so it's uh, an iterative process. It's not a one-way linear process. Um, and the great thing about OpenStreetMaps is that there's an invitation to participate in every single phase of this mapping process. And that's what's unique about OSM is this is you're not just participating on the map side. We have an opportunity to participate on the, um, the data abstraction side, the observing the world, putting it into the map, putting it into the servers. It's, we have a place to participate in each phase of the way. And the exciting part about that is like, um, in participatory mapping, we, we talk about involvement leads to learning. Um, so if you tell me, I forget. If you show me, I remember. But if you involve me, I understand. So with OSM, we can use it as a tool to learn about the landscape, to learn about the GIS process, um, and then to help people remember each of these steps. Um, so as I'm developing course material for my students, I'm constantly thinking about jobs they're going to have in the future and the people they're going to interact with at these jobs. Um, so I'm kind of trying to translate these phases into actors and people and tailoring my course material to meet the needs of the students. So we have the back-end developers, we have front-end developers, we have GIS analysts, and then we have the people with the local knowledge that are being input into these GIS, um, GIS systems. And we need all of these people to create OSM. Um, additionally, we need diversity and participation in this landscape. Um, we need each other to make better maps or else we're just gonna keep reflect, making uh, reflections of ourselves. So there's something to be aware of. Um, but since we have all of these different actors, we need different pedagogical approaches to reach each one of those nodes and each one of those participants, and then also make them aware of each other. 
Um, so as I'm constructing my, my course material, so with the Masters of Geospatial Technology, all of these students are coming in with a GIS um, certificate already. So they're GIS analysts pretty much when they're coming into this program. Um, and they're interested in learning more mapping tools outside of the traditional desktop GIS packages. Um, so I'm constantly asking what mapping tools are available, what tools and skills should be taught, um, and where should they be taught? How should we be teaching them? And as a professor, my goal is to um, have my students obtain jobs when they exit university. So that's really the core question I'm always thinking about. Um, I also come from a constructivist learning approach. So you can only present, um, you have to build on what the student already knows. So these, my students, for example, they have no programming background. So even though these new tools that we're using require some level of programming in terms of, um, you know, JavaScript or HTML, if they want to make tools that are web-based, um, how do we introduce that to uh, traditional GIS students? when they all have different um, epistemologies or different ways of knowing. So when I was a GIS analyst, I was really intimidated to learn programming. Um, and then I, but I quickly, like I quickly realized that I was going to need to learn some programming if I wanted to make tools or modify tools to increase participation, to teach my students, to remain relevant in my field. Um, and that's when um, my older brother, uh, he offered me some really valuable advice. Can you tell what his profession is? <laughs> he's not a minister. He's actually a computer programmer. Um, this is his Twitter handle. And he said to me, Britta, if you want to keep going with your career and you want to make these interactive tools, you're going to need to learn programming. But I was so afraid to get out of my GIS analyst box, to get out of my toolbox. Um, I was like, no, no, I don't want to be a programmer. That, that, that just isn't what I want to do and it I could tell he could tell that I was intimidated by the thought of programming and I distinctly remember one Christmas he opened up his uh, computer and he just said just look over my shoulder just look over my shoulder and what he op he cut and paste a little bit of JavaScript and changed one digit in the Latin long in one line of code and the whole map changed and that just changed my my way of knowing and my my view and so he was really taking the constructivist approach. He knew I knew how to cut and paste. He knew I knew how to change a digit. And to me, that just opened up a whole new toolbox, a whole new world, and a new opportunity for me to um, expand my horizons. So I try to think about that with my students. What do they know? What are they comfortable with? What are they excited about? Um, and how can they expand their toolboxes in a comfortable way? So as I was thinking about developing curriculum for these students, I thought about these different levels to build on the scaffolding of what they already know to um, expand their skills. Um, and I'm not really comfortable with this hierarchical approach, but this, was, this is kind of my early conceptualization of this relationship. Um, but I really think, um, I'm not sure it's stratified. I think we all have something to contribute here, so I don't really like the hierarchical approach, but let's go with it for now. Um, so I feel like um, when we're introducing new people to this community, they start out at um, level one. Um, they're using OSM to make add a point or you know modify some things. There's the traditional GIS student and then the cyber GIS expert. So this basic user, um, they're probably like the high school student. They can click and zoom and add a point, uh, browse OSM, and they're comfortable with basic digital literacy. Um, level two, I think of as that traditional GIS student um, that's comfortable with um, desktop GIS, who can perform basic um, analysis and uh, they can consume web mapping services and do data entry and data export. And then there's a cyber GIS expert. And this is one of the few times that you get to all meet together. And it's been so stimulating hearing about all these new tools that are being built um, on OSM and for OSM. Um, there's just so many different tools that we're able to build as a result. And these are the cyber GIS experts that I would argue are experts. They have the programming knowledge to continue to build. But instead of a pyramid, maybe this is more like a merry-go-round. We're all constantly in motion. We're jumping onto the merry-go-round and jumping off the merry-go-round. And it's 
always moving. And as I was Googling images of a merry-go-round, this um, the bottom image with the uh, many different children on it. Has anyone seen this before? Yeah, it's actually um, a, a well pump. So the students are playing on this merry-go-round, but they're actually pumping water for their community. And I feel like that was a really good analogy for OSM because a lot of times it feels like a game, like we're playing, we're adding art, but we're really contributing to this larger entity. Um, so I thought that was a really good uh, image. And so even though with my personal journey through um, GIS and cyber GIS, I started at level one and moved up, but I'm noticing from the C cyber GIS community, you can start at any of the levels and jump into this community. You can start as a computer programmer and then learn about um, GIS analysis and spatial distribution of phenomenon and all these geographic concepts. So you can really jump into this community at any level. Um, and I really feel like this OSM community makes room for each level. And I've been really, really, really impressed with all the different map time communities that are emerging and the different types of concepts that they're um, sharing with each other. And I feel like it's been a, a really valuable um, time to learn from each other and each other's skill set. Because there's such a wide range of skills that are required to contribute um, to this present landscape of GIS. And I think as an OSM community, we all kind of agree that we need to attract new and more mappers to get a more robust picture of what's happening in our world. Um, but I think it's a challenge in that um, we need all of these different actors, but we don't always know what the other person is doing in terms of their skill set, in terms of their lived experience, and we're not always aware that they even exist. So this um, bird in the top right corner, is it aware of the fish in the, in the bottom, and does it matter? Well, for the purposes of this picture, it does matter to make it a more beautiful and complete picture. So just like with the map, even though I may only know how to add a map dot, and you know how to make this uh, you know, robust tool set, we need to work together to populate the globe. We each have a, a really unique role and we need to be aware of each other's roles and we need to be able to find the resources to learn to work together and to communicate to each other and gain an awareness of all of the different actors. Because otherwise our maps are just going to be reflections of ourselves alone and not the world as a whole and we'll be um, unaware of each other. So I feel like all of us here are kind of GIS or mapping diplomats. We're here as ambassadors for our community. So I invite you all, not if you're an educator or not, to ask a new friend or when you're telling someone about what you do, ask them what they're enthusiastic about, what are their interests, and then share with them this amazing tool, this amazing skill that you have access to, that you have knowledge of, um, and introduce them of ways that it could use them to, they, they could use it to help solve their own problems and um, embrace their own uh, excitement. Um, one of my students sent me this uh, image and I, <laughs> it always makes me chuckle. So, you know, when I first started programming, I thought of everyone who programs looks like what my friends think I do, this, this image here. Um, but I don't think, none of us really throw computers out the window, right? We've never felt that way when working on maps. <laughs> so I think it's our, our opportunity to um, communicate to each other what we actually do. And then invite more people um, to embrace their enthusiasm. How can we invite them to the mapping community? And I think it's a really exciting time to do that because the technology is becoming more accessible and the technology is becoming more fun and exciting. So one way we, we could um, introduce, the new, introduce more community members is by um, introducing or embracing technologies that might not typically seen, be seen for mapping purposes. Um, so I'm trying my best to engage my students and listen to them and um, understand what makes them excited and what makes them tick, and then also sh pointing them into the right resources to continually learn. Because the, while the concepts may re 
remain the same. They need to know how to learn on their own. They're not going to be in school forever. They need to find the resources that many of you are posting um, to keep on learning. Um, I'm trying to teach them a skill, um, and but ask them what skills they want to learn in the process so that they remain engaged. And I've just been so floored by, um, I'll give them a very, very vague lab assignment, like um, create a, a map that updates in real time, and I don't tell them what t content to put in it. And they came up with so many different interesting things. We had maps of earthquakes. We had a map that kept the real time of the space station. I mean, it's just amazing the resources that are available and the creativity that these students have. Um, and so I try to impart, I try to, uh, impart them the same knowledge that I was given, learn a skill. And so even though that I, I'm not in New York, I don't live in New York, and I'm, um, I, I didn't become my Aunt Martha exactly, um, I'm really stimulated in the job that I do have, and, that, and I'm so excited that I was exposed to GIS, and I couldn't be happier where I am in this opportunity. Um, but I did, I am kind of excited too, because um, I'm actually in my Aunt Martha's workplace right now presenting in front of you guys. Um, this is a picture of my Aunt Martha um, standing exactly right here. So I, I'm, thank you for sharing this moment with me. This is very exciting. <laughs> um, and, if, um, and if you have any questions about the Masters of Geospatial Technology or anything else, I'll leave you with this picture of Tacoma. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yes. Magic. There we go. Uh, <laughs> My name is Yuri, I work for Wikimedia Foundation, and my question is concern, concerning Wikipedia. How do you see collaboration between students and educators in general in terms of GIS uh, with Wikipedia content, and how can it be beneficial to both sides? Okay. Well, I've read studies that um, students actually put more effort into homework assignments when they know it's going to be online, and especially on Wikipedia. Um, so I, uh, I think that there's a great opportunity to incorporate that into the classroom. Um, I, is there a more specific question? I don't think. OK. Um, yeah, I think it's an exciting opportunity to incorporate into the classroom. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes. What I'm thinking about because um, you know, see, uh, part of my curriculum next level in uh, in doing some GIS uh, work in OpenStreetMap, and the students I'll be having aren't uh, programmers; they're not computer science majors, and you know it's hard to uh, sort of think about where do I begin that curriculum with like a uh, most likely um, zero experience level of a group of like uh, undergraduates. And, um, and I don't know if your experience is sort of relevant to that since you're in a dedicated program, but mm -hmm. it's interesting to hear your re recommendations about curriculum, how you developed, or what resources you borrowed from. Yeah, yeah, so I, I pointed my students towards Code Academy. Um, because, you know, in my formal training as a GIS analyst, I was never taught programming. It was literally looking over my brother's shoulder and going, going from there. And so that's kind of how I've been teaching my students as well. I feel like eventually web programming is going to have to be in the core curriculum for like intro, you know, uh, as part of your first year courses in in undergraduate, but for now, when we're having to introduce these concepts, um, my recommendation is just slowly, 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 a basic uh, HTML, and then slowly building up. Um, and the students responded really well. If, if you, I just showed confidence in them and their ability, and they have amazing websites. Um, I have links to their websites on my, my websites. Um, but it's just, I think it's really just that hurdle of, I don't want to learn to program. That's not what I came here to do. But then once they see what they can do with it, they, they just run. Yes, this is Sterling. Well, last night there was an interesting 
and somewhat provocative lightning talk where the speaker said we should drop commercial GIS out of the curriculum and use an OSM-based curriculum. So you mentioned the GIS and T body of knowledge is still very relevant. So which parts of that body of knowledge do you feel have to be covered with commercial GIS and which parts could be taught with OSM? Or could it all be taught with OSM-based resources? I think the parts of the body of knowledge that are most crucial um, are around cartography and communication and decisions around types of spatial analysis to conduct based on the data that you have. Just because you can, you know, push a button and do a tessellation doesn't mean you should. Just because you can create a heat map doesn't mean you should. And in the body of knowledge, they, they really articulate those fundamental um, geographic an analysis uh, theories and rules. And that's really what, it doesn't matter what technology, what base map, that doesn't matter. It's those fundamental principles around geography and cartography that are really, really important. Because we can make all the online maps in the world, but they're not all good. They're not all communicating anything. Um, so that's really the pivotal, fundamental part. Yes? Uh, I'm working in your city park and recreation. Uh, my great passion, chief visualization the visualization, the tactical analyzer, and web mapping. But I would like to know, I, I know about author of textbook, uh, thematic map, thematic yeah. allography, and the visualization. That why, that my favorite textbook <laughs> that I, I took to cartography course with the Swedish professor in my Ohio State University. Hola, name Hola, I go with. Yeah. That, that textbook name. Uh, what uh, textbook will help to create uh, chief visualization in OSM mapping? So you think the the book will help with geovisualizations and OSM mapping? Is that what you said? Yeah. Oh, come. Right. A uh, lot of uh, cartographic creative more visualization into open tweet map dot well out it outcome. Exactly. Yeah. Out it outcome. How can we incorporate those ideas into OpenStreetMaps? Yeah. Is that the question? Um, well, I think right now OpenStreetMaps is, uh, you can pull the data and then visualize it in any way you want. So there's a big opportunity for geovisualization in that regard. That's a great opportunity. Yeah. David. Hi, David. Yeah, I'm from Nigeria. I'm working on an initiative to uh, use GIS to teach geography at the secondary school in my country. And it's been overwhelming listening to the first presentation and yours. Uh, one thing that strikes me is uh, there's this uh, experience that everyone has shared of the challenge of implementing GIS and the teaching of geography and all of that. And it makes me feel good that I'm not the only one having this challenge. Uh, and. Uh, I, I, I love some of these slides that you've had, particularly the one that showed the picture of uh, kids playing and uh, yet pumping water for their communities. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that's the concept in what I'm trying to do, you know, giving them tools to play with, and yet they're learning geography. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Uh, please, I'd like you to scroll back to that page, uh, this, the, the pre your presentation page, where you showed what people think of you. Actually, I just want to take that picture. It's really great. So thank you very much. Yeah, great. Uh, yes, you. Thank you so much for your talk. I just had a question. Um, so writing labs for students in ArcGIS tends to be pretty easy because the software only changes slightly between um, different versions, but I'm wondering how you kind of keep track and change and update your labs mm -hmm. um, when you're talking about open source technologies. Yeah. Um, well, this was my first year of teaching, <laughs> so I yeah. In the future, I, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do it every year. Um, but I have intentionally made the labs vague because these students need to learn that 
the, the technology is going to change so rapidly. And so they need to be able to not only complete the lab, but find the resources to figure out how, to, how it's changing. Um, so I, inher I inherently make, make the labs vague for that purpose. Um, and also, in traditional GIS certificates, it seems like you, you t the labs are like 20 pages long because it shows you exactly where to click every single button. Um, and I do not provide that amount of detail. Um, because it's changes, and also because there are so many other resources available, I don't need to re rewrite them. Yes. And my name is Dan Eldridge from New York. Hi. Could you, um, a put the slide up of your mother, please, and leave that. <laughs> it's it's up my there. aunt, my aunt Martha. Your aunt. She's actually standing right here. <laughs> oh, where is she standing? <laughs> right here. Oh, uh, do you have a slide also? <laughs> and also, could you comment? On, I'd like to hear your comments about uh, Professor Edward Tufte's work and how it relates to GIS in general. But leave that slide up, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, Tuf Tufte's made, I mean, he's brought so many different fields to the, the attention of visualization and urban planning, and um, he's made great, great progress. Um, and he's also, he's also attracted a lot of people outside of the field to this idea of geovisualization. Um, so he's, and he has beautiful uh, coffee table books. <laughs> yes. Hello, my name's Noel. Um, I'm looking for resources to teach elected officials or at least policymakers around cartography, mapping GIS. Um, what examples or resources could you point me Two. Um, I mean, another simple way to ask it is um, taking it from the novice perspective of not even knowing um, this general direction. Is there a, a general resource that um, cyber GIS uh, um, educators are collaborating in? Uh, you know, is there like a one-stop shop for all the different syllabuses that people have? Right. Um, that's actually the deliverable that we're working towards. Well, we're sharing um, educational materials, but that's a great idea for like a product to give to a novice. Because a lot of my students, they're uh, local GIS analysts in local government. And so they're actually taking what they've learned in lab and showing their bosses, showing elected officials what they've learned. And they're actually carving out new jobs for themselves. Um, so we haven't formalized that process, but it's definitely happening. So that's actually a really good idea. Uh, and yeah, maybe we can work together on that. Thank you.